we have to broadcast it as well. So let me start the broadcast. Okay. So Marnie, do you want to try speaking? Okay, so Miles is working with her. Um, in the meantime, Lori, should, should we get started? Great. Call to order. Welcome everyone. It's really great to see those of you whom I can see. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish there was a way to really see all of the participants at the same time. But um, I'm looking at the, the participant list and welcome everyone and welcome to anyone who's watching this. Um, we, yeah, we're really looking forward to meeting in person again. Hopefully when in September is when they're saying now, Shannon. No, through the end of the calendar year. Oh, the end of the virtual. calendar year. Oh, that's yeah, right. so I'll give an update on that. So, yeah, we'll have a lot of good updates from Shannon because while we've been unable to meet, she and Naomi have been working really hard. And I uh, really want to thank them for everything they're doing. Um, look forward to hearing about the budget today and everything that's new. And um, with that, I say we move on to public comment, if there is any. There is none. Okay, great. So, um, I guess we already had that. So, we're ready for our staff update, please. Shannon. Naomi. Naomi there? Um, yes, hi. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought maybe Shannon was going first, but I can certainly go. Well, I can, my agenda item's next, so I can give the, the next report um, and then pass it to you, Naomi. Great. Um, so the, uh, as I mentioned in the email, we, and subsequently, we, um, council recently acted to make some changes to meetings of, of boards and commissions, which includes um, continuation of virtual meetings for all city boards and commissions through the end of the calendar year and possibly beyond, they will revisit towards the end of the calendar year. Um, my understanding of this is that it is because it is not necessarily due to health orders, but rather because they're interested in all, continuing to offer um, hybrid um, meetings, such as remote public comment, so people don't have to come physically to the meetings to participate. Um, and to do that is going to take some. Um, resources in terms of staff and uh, technical resources because currently the meeting rooms aren't set up to allow for all of that kind of functionality. Um, they've figured it out within council chambers, but um, we have more boards and commissions than can meet in the council. And the council chambers takes quite a bit of resources to have both remote. Well, I, actually, I don't think they're doing remote right now. I, I think they're still figuring it out. Um, within council chambers, um, how to do both. So, but don't quote me on that, even though I'm being recorded. Um, <laughs> uh, but at any rate, we know that to do it for boards and commissions, it's gonna, it's, it's a little bit more complicated, and it's going to take resources. That means budget implication. So that I think is the reason why this is being delayed, not because of public health things necessarily. Um, I don't know if it, that was made, said explicitly in the city council meeting, but I know that is a desire is to allow greater public participation through continuing to allow remote comments. Any questions about that? Okay, so with that, I'll pass it back to you, Naomi. Okay, um, so this is just a brief update on the city hall mural project um, under our reframe umbrella. As you heard previously, I think, council directed staff to concentrate on this project last year and first directed staff to look at the covering the murals. 
then rescinded that direction in February of this year uh, in favor of a youth lobby display and continuing with the plans for community engagement. Um, so in April, we piloted the youth lobby display, but realized that for a more worthwhile engagement, deeper engagement, we needed to have the workshop actually facilitated by an artist. Um, so we're in the midst of hiring, I think, I hope, a wonderful artist um, with deep ties to this topic. Um, but since we haven't quite finalized the details, I, I don't think I should mention it. But um, we do hope that she'll be able to run the classes um, based on our activity sheet in July next month. Um, and then we'll have some hopefully more engaged youth art submissions to translate into posters for the lobby by the end of the summer. And then the other update is that the RFP solicitation process has been completed um, and uh, METSLI consultants have been selected to lead the community engagement process um, for what we're calling phase one. And they're in the contracting process, so we hope that we'll get that finalized by the end of July so that they can start work. Um, and we think that their public engagement activities will probably straddle the end of this year and beginning of next. Um, in terms of their scope, they're charged with three main deliverables, uh, which is engaging the community around discussions of civic memory and representation in our public spaces, and specifically history of Santa Monica and the Bay District, which is the actual name of the Stanton McDonald Wright mural. Um, and in order to do that, they'll be working on providing opportunities for participants to learn, share, and commemorate uh, stories and histories that arise through these uh, processes. And uh, they're planning to do six in-person or virtual events, uh, plus youth engagement activities and sort of um, lesson plans and sharing their responses and findings. Um, so that's the first and main deliverable. Then we are also having them develop recommendations for phase two based on the findings from these uh, stakeholder and community. And additionally, they're going to be creating a framework for future reframe projects based on lessons learned from both Delmar and this project. And we hope to use those. That's the update for City Hall mural. And I think the next thing is new business. Can we, uh, do we have, uh, can we ask questions? Oh, yes. Um, it, it sounds really good. I'm just wondering, is there opportunity for adult education as well, or only youth education? The adult education, we're uh, looking at the six engagement activities to be the adult education. Um, they propose to do a couple of things um, that will live on the website so that they're calling them asynchronous engagement. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that they are meant to be youth oriented, but they, we're not quite sure if they're going to be all ages or what kind of what that's going to look like. Um, but we're for the virtual events, we're definitely recording those. So I hope we can make those available so people can learn about the you know panel discussions or whatever we're going to have. I just hope that in addition to the community engagement process, that as one of the one of the deliverables would be a final result um, that would be educational for all ages oh, yeah. in the mm. in whatever is done. In other words, yeah, you know, it's not only the youth who need education. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, I, I may have glossed over the one of their main deliveries. And um, this report is what we're sending to city council, but is also going to be on the website and it's going to be a real, you know, gathering all the things that we learned. So um, I think that's definitely adult focus. The website, but what about yeah. what will happen at City Hall? I mean, I'm, well, I'm assuming. I, 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 I think I Naomi, Naomi cut off. Um, she was talking about the final report that's going to have the summary of all of the materials that have been the whole program is basically an adult educational series. I mean, that's what it is. And so there will be a final report that gets presented to city council and all of those things will then inform the artwork that is part of phase two in the second phase of this project. Does that um, answer your question? Yeah, it does. Oh, sorry, I cut out Thank there. You. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. Any other for... questions?
we move on? Right. <coughs> Naomi? Yep. Yep. We can't oh, hear you. Want to call the next Lori? Oh, I thought Naomi had another thing that she was about to present. Um, actually, my next thing is under new business. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Lori, we can't hear you. Sorry. Okay, so we've, let's see. So I think we're, we're moving on now to um, the budget. Is that correct? The new business Indeed. items. Okay, we had the status of board. We had Naomi's. Oh, we have. Oh, we have. What I what I see next on the agenda is the budget and report and the city yards project. Correct. So the budget would be next. Yes. Yes. Um, new and business A. Correct. And Naomi, do you want to give an overview of or the context of what, what we're going to be seeking from them before you dive in? Oh, yes. Um, so uh, everybody got the materials that we sent ahead of time. Um, we are hoping for feedback and suggestions. And then we're going to bring this budget back again to the joint meeting of the uh, Public Art Committee and Arts Commission um, uh, for approval. So. This is sort of the the final draft, or not, the not to, next to final. Okay. So that won't be that won't be going before the arts commission today. It'll go correct to the next meeting. Correct. Yes. Um, so any um, suggestions and comments that you have, we can incorporate to our final re revisions. Okay. So uh, let's see. A little uh, review back. This this report um, that I'm. Um, You've seen uh, is the proposed percent for our PFA budget allocations for fiscal year 2022 to 2023. It also includes an overview of completed and upcoming um, program activities. And if you recall, we've been gradually getting back on track with the budget review process, starting with a review of previous fiscal years um, percent for our projects and previous um, conservation projects. And I think now we are ca uh, caught up. So we're now at the point where we can uh, look at actual fiscal year 2021 to 22, um, which we've just finished, and the budgeted fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Um, please note that 22 to 23 budget represents projects that are scheduled um, to take place over several years. So where you see the total project budget, that includes both the actual spent, the budgeted, and forecasted. And we're only looking at budgeted, not really forecasted yet terms of this fiscal year, but when you look at the total project budget, it includes all of those uh, types of um, ways of looking at the funds. Um, and also to note that some of these projects are enhanced or I would say supercharged with non-percent for art funds. Um, so you'll see that those um, those totals are um, do vary a bit. So uh, onward to active percent for art. Projects, and this is um, just an overview of the Acknowledge and Reframe Together initiative that was created this year as an umbrella for public art and civic memory projects. We're calling Belmar our kind of first reframe project um, sort of retroactively. So for Belmar, we're waiting on an activity sheet, um, an educational uh, sheet for youth produced by artist and Belmar workshop leader, Susu Atvar, and she's actually delivering that um, in this next week. Um, and that will conclude the educational elements um, actively produced for Belmar. Um, the web page update uh, is currently on hold pending a redesign to conform to citywide website templates. Um, and we're hoping that that will launch later this year or in 2023. So when that template is available, the Belmar educational elements will be featured prominently. In the interim, we'll be doing some sort of, um, sort of stopgap things out kind of do a blog post and no more. Um, in addition, we are creating an on-site printed binder that contains the site guide, that, um, and that's currently in production and will be installed near the front gate of the sports field, both on the inside and the outside. Um, so people can actually take the binder. It's going to be kind of chained up to the fence, but they can take a look at it and read about it and um, 
get a little bit of deeper insight into the panels. Um, and then moving on to Light Paintings by Susan Narduli Studio. Uh, as you may recall, Light Paintings 02, the art glass screen behind the permit counter on the first floor of City Hall East, was installed in April 2020, uh, just after the onset of the pandemic. Um, but installation of Light Paintings 1 did come across several uh, road bumps. And that, that the piece that's going into the south stairwell of City Hall East. Um, it's been delayed by safety review and pandemic disruptions and construction and contractor issues. So these delays, um, as well as inflation and supply chain, um, increased spending on the project, which is now projected to be around $960,000. Um, that revised installation is currently in the city's procurement system, and we're currently negotiating a contract with the selected installation contractor. Um, so installation is anticipated uh, in fall 2022, um, crossing fingers on that. Could you re remind us of what the original budget was? The original allocation for the percent, yeah. percent for art uh, was 760000 of which um, 525 went to Susan Narduli. The rest was for... So a couple hundred and yeah. odd thousand more, okay. Yeah. Any other questions before I move on? Um, okay, so the City Hall mural project you just heard about, um, I don't need to go over too much of this, but um, just to note that the total budget for both Phase 1 and Phase 2 is projected to be around $670,000. Um, that includes about $575,000 in non-Percent for Art funds, so the lion's share. Um, the percent for art funds include that initial 71,000 that was allocated back in 2019 and uh, an additional approximate 25,000 uh, to support the community engagement budget. Okay, and then our city yards, I'm actually going to speak um, more in depth um, just after this. Uh, so um, just to note that that percent for art allocation is 500,000. Um, Administrative and support services, it just includes our artwork identification plaques and documentation, our public art archive, um, and projects such as the Manfred Mueller Twilight and Yearning uh, documentary, and sort of things. Um, collection care projects, um, we have um, consultants on collections uh, management, um, accession, deaccession, documentation, framing, maintenance of the public art collection. Um, uh, that's some of the things that are sort of annual and um, ongoing rather than emergency or large scale, which are um, going into the conservation fund. Um, for Art Bank, we are not contemplating any new purchases. Um, we do think that there's going to be some routine maintenance of the collection. Um, so we have two RFQs um, in progress. One is uh, to try and create a list of public art and collection management consultants um, so that when we do have projects for assessing, for example, the storage of the art bank collection, we, um, we can have somebody do project management for that. And also for the upcoming City Yards project, which I'll go into, we're expecting to have some project management um, for that as well. Um, and then we have a new art services provider RFQ that's going to create a list of folks who can take care of our collection in terms of art handling and um, conservative. So, forward to that. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Is there any, in our last conversation, we talked about, you know, the website and you know, the documentation. Is there any updates on potential progress on that? The Public Art Archive website is pretty robust now. It's got our, our whole collection in it, um, and we're continuing to update it. So you'll see if you if you search there, um, all of our Art of Recovery uh, projects, for example, are uploaded onto that. Um, so that's a nice, robust um, website with lots of pictures and good things. We're working on a, a Belmar page that's going to live on Public Art Archive that has pictures of all the panels and um, more video as well. Um, for the city website, we are um, acclimating to the new uh, templates that the city has created. Um, they are a little restrictive in terms of what we can 
uh, have up there. So, um, and, and some of it's not completed. So we don't have the template specifically for project pages, um, which um, for example, the city hall mural project will have a project page eventually. So um, we don't have some of those things in place yet. Thanks. Um, just a brief overview of conservation. We expect priority projects to still include the Beacon Overlook, Jody Pinto's work at Ocean Avenue in California Incline. And um, I just drove by there this morning. There's a lot of tagging on it, which makes me sad. Um, it does require extensive refurbishment um, as it hasn't lit up for about 13, 14 years. Um, and Bill and Mary Buchan's children's play area uh, the city is doing a general overhaul of Clover Park, and I believe um, we'll want to uh, update some of the um, painted concrete surfaces, which have flaked away, and um, various other surfaces. So um, those are two big ones. And uh, the third big one would be, in general, anti-graffiti coatings to murals, um, especially unbridled and whale, which get tagged quite a lot. Um, other public art activities, we are um, examining the private developer cultural arts requirement, um, um, the code and ordinance uh, set. We're looking to update some of the basis on which we charge private developers. Um, so hopefully we can start getting um, slightly bigger allocations from that. Um, the private uh, projects that are in progress right now are at 500 Broadway. 1550 Lincoln, 1640 14th Street, and 1650 Euclid Street. So at um, 500 Broadway, there is a project called Split Stone by Sarah Z, as you may recall. Um, it's nearing the installation phase. It's not quite there yet. 1550 Lincoln, uh, the installation of Lynch by David Cerny is complete-ish. Uh, they have some um, <laughs> they have some work to do on, I guess, programming um, or, or the kinetic part of it, um, they have some work to do on getting some sort of closet together with the various components, I guess. Um, and both of those, we should be seeing maintenance covenants um, pretty soon for those. So they're coming down the uh, down the runway. And the other two are a little further away, 1640 14th Street and red car projects and um, they are the, the various sculptures that have not yet been installed. And I think the, um, we uh, have, yes. Quick question. Will there be some kind of public announcement about these when these are complete? As they're completed, somehow letting people know about them? Well, we have in the past sort of relied on the developer themselves to do these announcements, and we can tag along or you know, um, share their posts and that sort of thing. Um, we haven't really put together our own announcement of them because we don't really own them in the same way. Um, so it's certainly something we can discuss. Um, one future project. Yeah. yeah. One future project I would love to do if we get an intern or a consultant on board would be to add these projects to the Public Art Archive so people can actually see all sorts of artwork and not just the city's collection. Um, we do want to be careful to kind of delineate which ones are city uh, owned so that people might not complain about the ones that we can't have, we can't do anything about. So, um, but yes, um, that's that's something that we'd love to do. Um, Deepa. Yeah, so uh, uh, just as uh, Laurie just mentioned, uh, if there is a, a communication at least um, to the Arts Commission uh, about the completion of the projects. You know, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know that would kind of bring it to a full circle for us um, since we've been involved right from the start of the project and also perhaps, uh, you know, get together and have a look at the final work. Uh, that would be great. And, and since the two that are nearing completion are almost right next to each other, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's okay. I, and I, I think that, too, this is Shannon real quick, is in the past when developers have done the unveiling for different private percent, 
they've invited all the arts commissioners and PAC members. So we can certainly uh, work with them to make sure that you're all on those lists as well. <laughs> Thank you. That'd be great. Thanks. And just as an aside here, we're also doing, um, uh, I'm planning a tour with the Public Art Coalition of Southern California um, and to, to go to Belmar and um, Lives That Bind and probably Metro's piece at downtown Santa Monica. So that would be a nice field trip if people are interested. Um, so just moving along, uh, other, other, um, other general activities. Um, we have uh, a project by Public Works to fence off the um, CNG LNG fueling station, the um, natural gas station on the corner of Olympic and Fifth. Um, they need to do a fencing project for apparently for security reasons. So um, that is going to reduce uh, accessibility to the Richard Wyatt Jr. artwork there. That's the granite wall and the glass canopy over the fueling station. Um, we consulted with Wyatt um, uh, about this and let, let him know about the, uh, the fencing project. Um, and we also did some documentation of the work. So it's, the pictures are available on Public Art Archive at, at least. And we're gonna be working with Public Works to uh, have an appropriate sign so people as they near the fence can at least read about the work and peer through the fence um, to see it. We've been working on a temporary art permit pilot, and we're excited about that. Um, just, just to know that that's out now on um, the open counter system. So um, members of the public who are interested in proposing works for the public space uh, now have a, a procedure for them to follow. And lastly, the Annenberg Community Beach House Gallery. Um, just to note that the art bank show that's up there is, is, is continues to be up and will be up for quite a while. Um, and I guess a note retroactively to say that the exhibition was made possible by a special reopening grant um, by the, fr from the Beach House uh, that they received from the Annenberg Foundation. So that particular project did not draw on percent of our funds. We have some. VIP guests there, basically. Oh, what's that? So I said we had some, you know, VIP guests recently at the Annenberg. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. The president and, his, and the first lady were there. <laughs> um, so that is the budget. Wait, uh, Naomi, just to clarify the Annenberg. Do I, I'm reading this quickly that, that it's, the on hiatus the outreach for proposals for artists in the community to propose used to be like quarterly shows so is that Correct. that's on hold right that's what i'm hearing that's right? on hold yeah so there's a, a consultant um, process right now to assess um, both the exhibition program and programs at the miles and at the camera so at the conclusion of that uh, we should know where we stand and, and may, may ask, what, how were they evaluating? Are they evaluating costs and what, what's the nature can of their I, evaluation? Can I clarify this, Naomi? The, the, it was put on hold because of budget and staff cuts, not because of this reevaluation. Oh. Um, the reevaluation is focusing um, primarily on programming around our artists and residents at the Beach House, um, the Camera, and the Miles Memorial Playhouse. Um, the, it is all, in all likelihood the exhibition program will continue. That's not necessarily really the focus of the um, consultants' uh, planning process. Th thanks for the clarification. Sorry, sorry to obfuscate. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, just, no. Just, They're just separate. It was canceled and it's on hold because of the budget. We don't have budget or staff for this right now. Right. Once the budget returns, I think this will come back because it's a relatively low budget, high impact kind of thing. Right. And, and may I ask the evaluation, the Miles Playhouse, you, you said artists and residents, is there looking at also the viability of the performance, um, like the jazz and the like that were? Yes, I'll be giving an update on that during my manager's report. But basically we're using this time when the budget cuts have forced the closure of the, um, the Miles Playhouse and the camera to really look at how the, the business model and the management structure 
for how they were operated and how they might be operated. Okay. So I have a, a wild one here. Um, and, and, and just sort of discussing all of this art that we have, both that has been funded directly by the city or a private developer. And I think it's a shame in a way that, uh, yes, you can take a look at it on, on the website, but it's a shame that after all the work that's gone into all of this art, there isn't some kind of way. I mean, we're talking really about a museum that is our city. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we had docents that say once a month did an art walk based on the public art and the public generated art as a, as a requirement of the percentage of art uh, that developers do and maybe art that, that uh, developers do that is, is public on public view uh, that isn't necessarily been vetted by the city, but uh, just some sort of way in which in which we can really um, educate ourselves and everybody else as to what's going on in the city. Just throwing it out there as a thought, how that, and it would be a volunteer, but obviously there would need to be somebody organizing it. I love this idea. Yes. Um, one little tiny step towards that is we are, um, Santa Monica Travel and Tourism asked us for help putting together a map of public art. Um, actually, they started with murals, but I think we're going to expand it all sorts of art. Um, so just as a kind of starting point for these hopefully lots of people who want to do tours or do self-guided tours or perhaps with the Conservancy or other groups who want to do tours, um, uh, we have some materials available. Yeah, because may I ask, you know, there's nothing that prevents, uh, what you say, an entrepreneurial entity to set up tours in Santa Monica, right? People can potentially do that using these maps and the like, right? Yeah, there are a lot of tour guides who stop at the beach house and talk right. about the beach house and stuff. And I think, you know, if you look at Airbnb, they have a lot of experiences now. Um, right. And people do put on their tours and, and things. So there is a certainly a private, uh, but whatever we could do to facilitate, I think, depends on our capacity. What else we're doing? To show, shall I move on to uh, our city yards? So I have just a few um, slides to help us look at the, the opportunities at city yards. So the this report is being delivered to. Public Art Committee and the Arts Commission simultaneously, um, unlike the budget. Um, so we're asking both bodies to, to provide feedback and suggestions for the project. And then our next step is to start putting together um, the panel um, and um, the RFP, RFQ. So um, just an overview, we have a percent for art allocation for our city yards of $500,000. Um, and in developing the scope, we considered a variety of approaches and interviewed a lot of um, uh, city yard stakeholders um, to make sure that we have um, staff buy-in for, for example, for the artist residency that we're using. Um, so, uh, Miles, if you can hear me, if you could throw up that slideshow, that would be fantastic. So um, I think I mentioned uh, the project in a very uh, general sense last time um, to note that the map here. So here we are um, just north of the 10 um, and you can see Gendar Park and uh, City Yards is the whole thing to the left, to the west of Gendar Park. Um, next slide. Um, next slide. And I think one more slide. Okay, so here's the plan. Um, so, so unfortunately, the plan as it looks here um, was considerably cut down um, since the pandemic. 
so initially there were going to there was going to be a public plaza and a lot of public amenities and really opening up city yards public experience uh, that got uh, cut uh, budget cuts um, forced a, a pretty big redesign not a redesign just a cutting back um, and so the the actual public facing amenity in city yards um, now is a small portion of that big pink building that you see towards the middle of the hot pink that's the new operations center and that's where um, uh, basically the offices of all the public works folks who are based in city yards uh, will be. And the lobby will be where folks can come and pick up um, from resource recovery and recycling a worm bin or information about composting or ask people about hazardous waste and those sort of questions. Um, they expect that people might also come and ask about their water bill or et cetera. The folks who are at city yards, and next slide, um, are members of public works, the resource recovery and recycling, uh, water resources, fleet services, so the folks who wash all the buses and fix all the garbage trucks and such, facilities maintenance, um, and our, our carpentry and uh, plumbing and HVAC and graffiti removal. Some of these divisions have, since the pandemic have been cut extremely. Um, so they may be one or two people or uh, also, the fire department is down there. They have a new fire training facility that is being built, um, and the old building and tower are there. Um, and that's um, they have a frontage along Delaware, the south end of campus. And the clerk's office has the print shop. So those are the folks at City City Arts. Next slide. So when we looked at the site and the opportunities, um, we were looking at uh, having two opportunities on site, one being an artist in residence program and uh, the other being a commissioned artwork in a specific site. So for the artist residency, um, I talked to various stakeholders at City Yards and the only folks who really had the capacity to engage with a, um, a resident artist, uh, it seems, is uh, Resource Recovery and Recycling, RRR. Um, so next slide. Um, that residency, um, we'd be looking for a social practice artist to work um, on an equal basis as a collaborator with RR. Um, and this would be an open-ended, probably year, year plus process um, with various activities and various potential results. Um, we would probably note some uh, specific final results such as um, artwork, that uh, physical artwork that appears in the lobby of the operations center, or uh, perhaps physical artwork that gets attached to garbage trucks and various things. But there are lots of intangible um, benefits to having the artist resident there. The um, RRR's main program object objective over the next couple of years is um, communicating about the organics composting new state ruling um, that requires cities to start recycling, um, I think, all uh, organics um, all, or all compostable items need to have a process. Um, so that's something that we really want to help them communicate through the arts. Um, and that's the idea with this resident. Next slide. And then the commissioned artwork locations just wanted to show you are possible locations. There were um, many locations that we looked at that were really not very publicly um, available, publicly accessible. So these are the ones that in the end seemed like most likely. Next slide. Um, along Michigan Avenue, the main approach to city yards, it's, um, as you know, it's where um, the beautiful Ava Cockcroft mural was. It's 450 feet uh, all told, although there's some um, uh, driveways cut into there. Um, however, most of that 450 feet is temporary in that in the next 10 to 20 years when the rest of the City Arts project can be completed, um, those walls will be coming down because they are part of the buildings that line the in interior of the City Arts. The one part that won't be coming down in the near future is the Hazardous Waste Center wall, which is the very first 130 feet along Michigan. So if we were to do a permanent, um, say, mural, that would be a very good um, candidate. 
Um, but the rest of the wall is possible. If the mural were temporary, perhaps it could be removable and then it could be um, rearranged and put somewhere else, um, such as the fleet building, which has quite a lot of wall space. Um, we didn't go with the fleet building to begin with because it's really not very visible from um, exterior. Next slide. Um, there's the wall. So there's Michigan Avenue and the permanent section. Next slide. And this, again, this is the back of the hazardous waste center. So that driveway, people would go in and drop off their motor oil and stuff like that. Next slide. The next um, most public area is the fencing along the Gandhar Park parking area. So this fencing is actually the other side of the water division. Um, and uh, it's pretty extensive. Uh, next slide. Um, you can see, I did measure it, and I guess I didn't include that, but I think it's in yours, in the staff report. Um, it's, it's several hundred feet of um, chain link fence. Next slide. And from Stewart Street, um, you see Gandhar Park, and then on the right, this is a water um, storage building, water division building. And um, then as you go down the, the driveway here, you can see that the this chain link fencing is um, pretty unsightly and stretches quite a way. So it would be great to have an artist project that either alters the existing fencing. There's um, there's some very interesting chain link fencing that can be customized, um, like lace, lace work, which is very interesting. And then um, potentially signage or other flat treatments along this area also work. Next, um, this is just the other side of that. So that's the water division. Next, the fire training facility is also part of the new construction. And um, so there's a wall along Delaware um, Avenue on the south side of the project. Next slide. Um, so you can see these, these are pretty small streets. Delaware and Frank are kind of um, hidden. It, but if you go to the Southern California, the, the dump area, which is south of City Yards, um, it's kind of in between uh, and on the way. So next slide. Um, this is the view from the Cloverfield exit lane. Uh, so there's a pretty wide, um, pretty long wall here that could be muralized or other interactive work. And that's the view from the 10. Um, so that wall is under the Cloverfield sign. And it's pretty visible, especially for folks who are stuck in traffic. We did look uh, initially at the roof of the fleet building, but um, in terms of engineering and getting that ready in the next year, I think, um, and also it's sort of doubtful how much can be seen from the roofway. We have discarded that option. Um, and then the last thing is the temporary entrance for the next 10 to 20 years of public, uh, the public entrance for city yards is down at the end of Michigan. And um, next slide, you can see um, that uh, folks can also walk up from Michigan and follow a little pedestrian pathway to the mission center. Next slide, um, which now looks like this. Um, and next slide. Um, there's a little bit of public parking available um, that's temporary as well. So um, we looked at doing things um, to make this whole pathway more um, legible, but since it is temporary, sort of not sure if that's going to be worth it to do anything permanent here. Uh, next slide. And that's the front door of the operations building lobby. So that's where people will be coming in. And next slide, there is a little bit of wall space to the left of that front door that could be used for a mural treatment. So that are, that's all of the, um, the permanent commissioned artwork sites. Question? Yes. So yeah, so if I'm hearing you right, that yeah, that's a lot of walls and the like. So the, I'm looking at the line item. It says commission artist. Am I assuming that there's maybe multiple artists? And that line item of three hundred twenty thousand dollars would pay for artists and materials to create art on some or all of, or, or, of these walls that you just showed us, correct? 
there it's a lot of surface area it's a yeah, lot of a lot. Uh, it's a lot of sites and we're yeah. really considering this to be an opportunity for one major for work one rather than many small works um so uh so yes if for example if we had a 450 foot temporary mural on frames um there's a lot of that money would be going towards fabrication well, um, let me clarify what I think I, what you just said. You showed us like seven or eight different separate areas yeah. that could potentially be creatively enhanced. But and so and then you're saying one artist, I mean one project. So the question is, are you going to have to be choosing amongst these locations? Correct. You're going to choose one so, location, or how many locations might be chosen? So the idea is to offer all of these sites to the artists to propose, right. and they would choose a site and propose their project. Would you and entertain it, something like a collective? So in other words, maybe three artists get together and t choose a whole bunch of different flight places and somehow connect it together, whether it's a mural or some other kind of way in which it sort of weaves a thread through the site? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, we were trying to make sure that it wasn't um, too many projects at once, um, but if it was a collective, um, I think some of the coordination that they would do. And that Naomi, and, and, could I could I interject real quick? Please. Um, so this is pretty common where you would allow multiple sites in an RFP, and the artist could choose between them which what they'd like to propose for. And so you offer a variety of sites, never expecting that you'll have art at all of them, but it's giving the artists a broader palette to choose from with regard to where they might site work. So for example, with the City um, Hall East project, you know, we offered the courtyard, the stairwell, the, we offered a number of different spots and the artist came back with a proposal for the permit wall and the stairwell. And so those were what were selected by the panel and approved by the Arts Commission, and there was no art in the other places, which is fine. And so in the same vein, this project will be looked at by Public Arts and the Arts Commission to review, correct? Yeah, it'll correct. go through the multiple stage approval process that all, it goes through a panel first to select the artist, and then it goes through, you know, there's multiple steps of review right. and approval. And I was just about to go through that selection process, but Deepa, you had a question. Oh yeah. So um, I just heard Naomi say um, that you let the artist decide the place. Uh, do you think it would work better if the city decides the, the spot and then uh, find an appropriate artist uh, for that particular Spot and then give the artist the the liberty to choose what he or she wants to do. Would that not be a something potential? It's definitely a valid way of, of proceeding. We narrowed the sites down from quite a few other sites. Um, so these are the most feasible sites. Um, so that's that's the idea is that they have a little bit of choice in terms of what they'd like to address. Um, it does mean that the panel will be judging apples and oranges, but that that's that's part of this. But ultimately, the 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 panel then can choose which is the most compelling proposal that works. Yeah, and and yeah. And it reminds of the, the the time frame over time that this may roll out. Uh, this is happening in 2022-2023 and a little bit later. And Lori, you were um, muted for some of that last bit you were saying, so we didn't get everything you said. Oh, I, I was just saying that it makes sense that uh, different artists would come up with different concepts for different sites, and so then it would give us an opportunity to see what seemed the most compelling. And, and as Gwen said, some might choose to do multi-sites and have them connect throughout the City Arts would, would be great. I think it would be great if it could be done within the budget. It would make it feel like more than just a, a mural, you know? It's a shame if our only public art project can be murals, you know? There's, 
nothing else. So if it could be a multi-site piece that was more had more of an installation feeling because it was bigger than one mural, that could be interesting. Um, so, uh, I think Michael, you were asking about the time frame. Um, yeah, the, you're saying, yeah. the um, construction is, is nearing its end, although they haven't yet finished with the fire training facility. So that's actually the next, that might be the next thing. Um, they've got the, <coughs> the fleet building done, um, and the operations building is nearing completion. Um, so, Things are starting to get to roll roll up. Um, we've been notified that we should be trying to wrap this up in 2022, 23, and a little beyond. So mm -hmm. we expect that um, installation, fabrication, installation will probably take a little longer than that. But um, in terms of kind of getting the whole selection process and, and getting things started, that is in, within this next year. Deepa. Uh, yeah, um, just uh, trying to rephrase the same thing that I said earlier. Um, uh, you know, uh, th this is something that, that you, you just spoke of five to six places in prime spots in the city, and this is exactly what every artist hopes for, you know. Uh, having said that, uh, we also want it to be impressive uh, and uh, and create a, you know, uh, a sense of uh, a public art that we all love in the city of Santa Monica. So uh, is there a, someone who's taking an overall view of this and curating this whole city in a certain way, or a set of a panel of curators who, who have a, a dream or a, a wish of what it, uh, what they want it to look like? Uh, I hope I'm I'm able to express myself well, but uh, is you mean there like a, a, like a bigger vision for the city? A bigger vision, exactly. With uh, and for that you, I mean, uh, these are kind of fragmented. You know, um, if someone can put this whole thing together, like a chief curator or a or a panel of curators who can vision this whole thing as a as a whole and not as a fragmented. Uh, um, so is that a possibility? Um, maybe, maybe Shannon wants to jump in. I would say that um, it's it's one of the reasons we have a public art committee and, and an arts commission is so that we have some <laughs> general consistency. Um, and so your comments and, and suggestions are very much appreciated. If we look backwards, I think we see some phases of the city's um, public art. I see a lot of um, art and infrastructure projects from the 90s and the, and the early 2000s. And I feel like we might be in a different phase now, um, but it's maybe not clear yet what that is. Um, so, uh, Shannon, if you have any thoughts. Uh, I, I agree very, with what you said, Naomi. Interesting. Interesting ideas, yeah. I'm just noticing that Nathan and Michael's names are switched. <laughs> oh, so, and, and, I, and just a comment as an observation with the you know, the reframing projects. I mean, it does seem, if I be so bold, that we have a very cultural inclusive approach over the last while, which I sense is going to continue on. So, if anything, I think we're kind of evolving to that. At least that's one significant aspect of what we're doing in the city, by, from my perspective. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> yep. um, well, let me, oh, sorry. I, I just would say that um, I think that partly because we haven't been meeting very regularly, we haven't, as the Public Art Committee and the Arts Commission, really haven't, I would say, had much of a role in the visioning or you know, overall I, visioning of, for curation of artwork in the city. Um, I would love it if we did, but we don't. And it, it seems like really that has been something that's been between cultural affairs and whoever you hire as consultants more. But I think 
I love the idea. And if there's some way that we can build on that, I think that would be great to keep in mind that that's something that we're interested in. Definitely. Um, I, I guess I'm sorry. Just you know, I, I I understand that the selection process will start with convening a panel of curators and art administrators, and I don't know if any of those people are are um, people who you've worked with before or who you know have a, a sense of this city, but maybe part of the the idea of what they're doing is to you know, I'm not sure if they, they'll be given an opportunity to take into account the, you know, what else is happening in the city besides city yards. I mean, I just think it's interesting. It, it was a good point to bring up, Deepa. And we, we typically orient panels to the environment in the city, the public art collection. I mean, the, the panelists aren't just brought in, you know, blind um, to what we're looking for. So I think that, you know, there's definitely um a chance to kind of share with them what you know vision is and i think also you've done it in the past where usually an uh, art commissioner or a public arts committee member is a part of the panel i know i've had the opportunity to do that and uh, found it very fascinating and interesting uh and that way you can have some local perspective along with the other panelists who maybe don't have quite such a knowledge of santa monica definitely all right well thank you for that feedback that was um really helpful yeah and i and think we can we can do that. I, I don't know if I need to go over the selection process. It's in the staff report. Um, we'd love your thoughts on that. Um, it Because of the slightly abbreviated time frame for the City Arts Press, slightly, it's fairly abbreviated. So we are trying for a um, uh, invitational process that will hopefully streamline a little bit. Um, but please take a look and let us know your comments. And um, I, I will see the floor if, i think we have one update um before we can adjourn and is that that is um for our pack members that are not arts commissioners we'll be giving um an overview of the art of recovery project so to date um so you're welcome to stay on for that if you'd like to hear that um, and then the final will be our next tentative meeting will be Monday, August 15th. So with that, if we want our chair to adjourn, we can adjourn. You're muted, Lori. About that. Thank you all for being here. And uh, on that note, we will adjourn and we'll see any of you who want to stay on for the, the Art of Recovery report. Thank you. To hear. Thank you. Thank you all and we'll take a, a minute and uh, reshuffle and uh, get ready for the Arts Commission meeting. And I don't know how much reshuffling we need to do. I think we can, I think we're good with a quorum. Is that right? We do the roll call. Did we do the roll call? Well, we need to call to order first, but let's make sure we have the quorum. Um, we've got Lori. We do have a quorum. I think the 917 number is probably Eric. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'd like to call this regular meeting of the uh, Santa Monica Arts Commission to order. Um, and uh, first, I would like to uh, have uh, Nathan do a roll call for attendance, and then we shall come on. Thank you, Michael. Good evening, commissioners. This is Nathan Birnbaum, uh, Cultural Affairs uh, Administrator. 
And uh, we'll begin by calling the commission uh, roll call. Um, Commissioner Zadikian. Commissioner Yeya. Here. Commissioner Swimmer. Uh, no, no, nothing from Commissioner Swimmer. Swimmer. Co Commissioner Subramanian. Yeah. Commissioner Michaels. Here. Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Chalice. Or Chalice. Is that possibly um, the person in the 917 number? If so, they need to unmute. Hmm. Thank you for unmuting me. This is Commissioner Chalice here. Thank you. Is that you, Eric? Okay, good. Thanks. Yes, it is. Barrow? Thank you for unmuting me. Baroff, sir. Commissioner uh, Chair Masucci. I am here. Thank you so much, Nathan. And, and uh, I, do I recall the role? Uh, would you like me to call the role for Public Art Committee? Uh, no. 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 This is not a joint this meeting. It's not a joint meeting. Oh, gotcha. No, not a joint meeting. How much easier is that? Okay, thank you. All right. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you all. I'm, I'm going to begin with um, some brief um, notices of um, some transitions. First, with sadness, I'd like to, uh, for those of you who are not aware, report the passing of uh, Iao category. For those of you who knew her, she was a consummate professional in every sense of the word. She, Her intellect and her talent was matched perhaps only by her incredible mastery of civil discourse and her grace. Her ability to work with divergent and convergent ideas was unparalleled. I learned so much just by watching and being in her presence. Um, she was an arts commissioner for many years. She served for some time as the vice chair, and she was a participant of many um, seminal subcommittees in the Arts Commission, perhaps most notably a long-standing member of a committee uh, tasked to study the future of the uh, Santa Monica Civic and also um, the writer of a white paper on advice and, and perhaps best practices dealing with sustainability and um, reasonable cost access to housing and studio space for artists within Santa Monica. Um, I regret I never got to know her personally very well, but I sat in commission meetings and a few subcommittee meetings with her on numerous and several retreats. Um, and I, I cannot think of a person who embodied what it is to be a thinker, what it is to be a statesperson, what it is to be a practitioner, a clinician, an academic, and uh, someone who lives in the real world. Um, I don't know what the universe does when we leave these bodies, but um, I'm sure whatever she's doing, she is doing it with the greatest of style and class and intelligence. Um, on slightly less sad notes, um, I also want to report the moving on of two commissioners. Uh, Janine Jackson is moving to Chicago and will no longer be um, gracing us with her presence. And uh, Kathleen Zadikian has had to resign for personal reasons. And um, we would like to applaud their contributions and um, wish them the greatest um, in their new endeavors. And um, the Arts Commission is um, a place where 
minds meet. We don't get, especially since COVID, to really um, become family per se. Um, but um, but these people were parts of uh, of what the Arts Commission has been, and um, we we look forward to the people who will be joining us um, uh, in their replacement. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Commissioner Ye for uh, her uh, Public Art Committee um, report. Thank you, Chairperson Michael Masucci. That was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, well, the uh, arts, the Public Art Committee just met and um, we haven't been meeting regularly throughout COVID, but um, we're pleased to see how much work Shannon and Naomi have been doing behind the scenes. Um, we, we took a first look at the, um, the budget for 22-23, which will come to the Arts Commission at our next meeting. Um, and we have heard some of the other updates, which you'll hear directly from them. So um, I think that is really all I need to say right now. Look forward to hearing uh, about Art of Recovery from Shannon and Naomi. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Um, I'm going to give two brief uh, reports for um, the Bergamont and the uh, Media Arts Ad Hocs. Um, the Bergamon Ad Hoc has been meeting uh, fairly consistently and has um, had the privilege of uh, meeting with um, representatives from Red Car, the uh, new management team that's in place, which are uh, have hit the ground running and are, are apparently doing a, an excellent job in the um, continuance and the uh, evolution of, uh, of, of Bergamon. There is um, a space that is currently um, in the process of being filled. It is the former office of the Worth Group, the previous management team. And um, that, that space is actually a, a rather unusual in that it's both an indoor and an outdoor space. There's an outdoor walled off um, space, uh, a bit too big to call a patio, but it's um, both uh, a, um, several office rooms and uh, and an outdoor space that um, uh, several very viable um, candidates have expressed interest in. And uh, the Bergamon Ad Hoc has, uh, has met and interviewed one and um, has uh, recommended them to be um, now vetted by Red Car. So before I can announce that they are um, accepted and will be taking that space, they do have to go through a fiscal um, viability, uh, you know, procedure through Red Car, but hopefully at the next meeting we will announce that that um, vacancy has been filled by a, a rather exciting um, group. Um, the Media Arts Subcommittee has uh, met um, every several months, and um, all throughout COVID has um, been discussing the possibility of using the uh, skill sets. Um, that that are are in place within the uh, the community members of uh, the ad hoc to um, propose the viability um, first a feasibility study would have to happen um, of uh, perhaps um, initiating an annual digital arts um, festival in Santa Monica. Um, initially, the proposal would probably be for Bergamot Station. Um, what we'll be doing is um, before we give a, a formal record, you know, um, proposal to the Arts Commission, we would like to convene um, a, a subcommittee to assess viability, to assess the legalistics, to assess what can and can be done, how much um, this will um, impact staff, how much it um uh, legally could be done um, by uh, fundraising um, it, through the private sector. So before we would want to propose something, we would want to know what can be done, and um, and we hope to um, be able to propose the uh, creation of uh, an exploratory group um, 
next next time. And uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Vice Chair Baroff to uh, talk about the mural subcommittee. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, the mural subcommittee has been meeting every other week irregularly. <laughs> um, um, I'm chair head off by Naomi. Um, and as you may recall, you know, the city council decided not to um, put a black scrim in front of the murals. So that was a, a reversal of their original thought. So that's behind us. And what's ahead of us now is an RFP had been put out and a consultant group has been selected to lead the community engagement process for what's referred to as the Reframe um, City Hall Mural Project, which is phase one of a two-phase project. So this first phase is going to be led by a group called METZLI, it's M-E-T-Z-L-I projects, and consists of a number of individuals. Um, Joel Garcia, who's an artist and a Monument Lab fellow, Rostin Wu, a public artist, educator, and designer, Dr. Robin Garcia, an arts consultant and Mellon Fellow, and We Rise co-director, and Susanna Laramie Kidd, an evaluator of research. So looking at them, a very substantive um, group of individuals have come together as a group to um, work on this. They've proposed um, building a process to foster dialogue in the about the diverse experiences and histories, like the stories that people tell about their experiences in Santa Monica to and engage in a variety of ways. I believe there'll be like six engagement events, maybe some also online. Um, so basically to get a fuller sense of our history that can reflect alternative um, ways of framing what the current you know murals um, that were painted in 1932, you know, now reflect. And um, their contract is being worked on as we speak and hoping to be ready by the end of July and having public these public events in fall. And so we're very encouraged and quite excited about this process, we'll, you know, which will create a whole, you know, public memory project, which is, um, you know, kind of, Sounds really great. Um, also, part of the um, mural project had been a outreach to students to provide their versions of artwork. Um, initial outreach through Virginia Annual um, Virginia Avenue Park was done, and, with, and John Adams and Lincoln Middle School. Um, however, it was felt that some of the submissions did not um, fully reflect the um, nature of what was expected to be the participation. So uh, we're now looking to um, reissue this poster activity and engage a facilitator to be a bit more intimate with the students to help guide them through you know, this process and, and the outreach to youth classes and um, camps and may engage some of the uh, consulting team to help on this project with the goal of installing a display in late summer um, in City Hall. So, as I understand, in the meantime, a larger sign that provides more context about the projects now on display in the lobby of City Hall. I'm looking forward to going over there and looking at it myself. We all maybe should take a look. And um, a lot of, you know, from staff, done a lot of this great work, and that's where it is. Phase two, this is this to remind us that this is phase one. Phase two will be a um, based on recommendations from this group that would then re recommend what kind of artwork and installations can be put into City Hall to reframe, you know, people's understanding and education of the history of these, you know, um, artworks which have a um, landmark um, um, essence to them, so to speak. So that's the that's what I know. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. Um, sure. I hope you can hear me. Um, you guys are frozen, but I was able to hear the audio, so hopefully you are hearing me. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, thanks. Um, well, now we have a, quite a long um, report from, from Shannon, who has a number of things to uh, brief us on. 
and um, this will take up the bulk of the evening. And there's some very exciting information that uh, you know we're we're all eager to hear. So um, with that, uh, Shannon, welcome and and thank you, and uh, take it away. And actually, we have two different sections. We have my manager's report, which I assure you won't be that long. And then we have the new business items that'll have a variety of presentations. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so for my report, um, I hope you all have seen um, very exciting news that after a number of years of work, uh, the city has been able to secure Freeze LA, which is a major um, international art fair coming to uh, Santa Monica. So in February of next year, Freeze will be at the airport. And um, it's really, really exciting. And they've been wonderful to work with uh, to bring this to fruition and um, hoping that it can be here for a number of years um, and possibly forever, uh, which would be really wonderful for the city. Um, so we have been working with them on this move to Santa Monica. And now uh, we're kind of pivoting to how they can work with our local artists, our local arts organizations, uh, with Bergamont Station um, as part of their freeze activities. So really want to make sure they seem very attuned to being connected to the community. And so we really just want to make sure that um, our arts ecosystem is strengthened beyond just um, having the festival there that this really is a place for the, the airport arts to shine, for the rest of the arts throughout the city uh, to really shine. And I think that there could be some great opportunities for commission-led projects around spotlighting different arts organizations um, and uh, as, as part of Freeze Week and what's, what's happening in the city during the festival. So it's super, super exciting um, to be hosting Freeze next year. Are there any questions about that particular item um i just want to say congratulations that's uh that's you know it it brings another level of world-class art um right into the hands of the community and um i i think this is a major major step and congratulations to you all congratulations doing that i just was wondering how was this the first year we tried or by we i mean you or is this something um, that just kind of came up and you guys were able to make it happen this year? Well, the the long story is, is that um, this has been kind of in the works for years. Um, we, I can't remember when they first approached us, but it was at probably at least a year before the pandemic um, and maybe even longer. They've been looking at various different locations in Santa Monica. And most recently before pre-pandemic, we were trying to um, see how we could get them to the site that they're going to be in at the airport. Um, but that site at the time was uh, marked as a park. And so there were all these rules about long term rentals and they have to be um, because this construction of the tent takes so long. They have to be on the site for over two months, I think. And so we were trying to figure out how we could get all the procedures in place to allow them to do a long term rental there. And then the pandemic hit and that site, the zoning of it as a park went away um, and it became airport zoned. And so immediately the problem that we were trying to find a solution to disappeared. And so we were able to um, take advantage of that and get a rental under the regular airport rules. So it was just a bit of serendipity. It would have happened regardless, but it would have taken a lot longer, I think. Um, if had we had to go through all these hurdles. That's really interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And probably yeah, more than you needed, but. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm really, I'm glad to know it. Thank you. It's interesting. Deepa, you had a question? Yes. First of all, Shannon, congratulations. I've already congratulated you. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for the city. And um, I was wondering if, if there's anything that the city would like to do to enhance the I mean to make maximum ma to maximize the you know the opportunity so to speak um, like for example um, uh, you know curate special events or um, you know there are like many celebrity artists and collectors and uh, you know art uh, 
people in living in Santa Monica. So it's, you know, uh, for example, uh, a private tour to a collector's house or an, or an artist's house. So these are the sort of things that I've been thinking of in my personal capacity, nothing to do with the Arts Commission. I had already proposed uh, something of this kind to LA Art Fair in a different context. But now after I saw this in paper, in black and white, um, I was wondering if if there's something that more that the Arts Commission can do in the, in the capacity as an Arts Commission or in an individual capacity. Uh, Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities um, for the Arts Commission to kind of find these intersections in different ways. So I think that those conversations are just starting. Okay. And I think that uh, we'll probably in the coming month or two have some some more kind of more concrete things that we might be able to do to kind of work together. But those are all wonderful ideas and kind of along the lines of of what we're thinking, yeah, and what what I think Freeze is wanting and needs us as a host. Oh yes, that's great. Look forward to it. All right. So moving on. Next, I just wanted to bring um, you up to speed on a planning process that we're working on. Um, as you know, during the, the when the pandemic hit, our budget took a significant cut in terms of both staff and funding, and we lost. Um, staff um, and funding for both the Miles Memorial Playhouse and the Camera Obscura Art Lab. Um, and then also our beach culture uh, programming budget took a, a bit of a hit as well. And so we're really, um, while we wait for the funds to come back to reopen those buildings, we're really using this as an opportunity to rethink the future of those buildings, um, those two facilities in particular, the, the camera and the miles, were really budgeted on a shoestring. And um, I think we're, we're really wanting to find some sort more sustainable models for how, how to run a theater. Um, for example, the Miles Playhouse, I think their programming budget was maybe $30,000 for the year, which is nothing for a theater. Um, and the camera was also, it was very, um, and Naomi did amazing work putting together programs at the camera on next to nothing and doing a lot of work, but really hoping to use this as an opportunity to, um, you know, rethink the programming there. And if there are partnerships that we can form to help activate these spaces. Um, so we have um, a couple of consultants that are working on this. And um, we'll be, uh, they're just starting their work now. And so you'll be hearing from them um, and they will be coming to you as a, at a future Arts Commission meeting. Um, but I just wanted you to be aware that these, this is in the works um, and is happening. And really we see this as an opportunity to as well think about our artists in residence model because um, both the camera and the beach house have really successful artists in residence programs. And so how do we kind of use those as models? Again, developed by Naomi in her time here, she did a great job with those programs. How can we really kind of strengthen those programs, extend the reach of our artists in residency program um, and the success of those projects? Um, so that's happening and I wanted you all to be aware of that. Um, one thing just to note is that we were able to retain a little bit of money at the Camera Obscura. So the artist in residence program has continued at that facility, even though it's not open to the public. So the artists still have retained access to their studios um, to do their work, but all their events and all the activities have, have been online and the, the facilities remain closed to the public. Any questions about that process? Okay. So, Shannon, so at the moment, the miles is, is completely dark. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. We are um, allowing its use for other city programs. So, um, Human Services used it last summer, and Community Recreation might use it this summer um, just to keep someone in the building. Nathan's been doing a lot of work because when buildings are um, empty, th things happen with them, and you need to, right. you know, you need to keep on top of them. And Nathan has been doing a great job uh, monitoring 
facilities to ensure that um, they're, they're kept at least as up to date as they can be and you know because i think both are going to ultimately need pretty significant capital improvements uh which you know is where maybe a partnership could come in thank you um and then my last update is um the boards and commission status so as you were all meeting virtually um sad to say uh, I think we all were very excited to be around a table together in person. Um, City Council acted last week um, to keep all boards and commissions virtual through the end of the calendar year, um, at least, and they'll be revisiting towards the end of the calendar year. And the main reason for this, I think, is because they, they're very interested in retaining uh, community participation in these um, meetings and so want to continue to provide remote public comment and remote remote public engagement. And to do that is a pretty significant re investment in resources, both staff and te technical, because the meeting rooms aren't set up right now to allow for uh, remote participation in the way that's needed. So um, we'll be uh, you know, working with city council on that or the clerk's office will. Um, but unfortunately, that's uh, that's where we're at is we're continuing to be remote um, through the end of this this calendar year. And I'll keep you updated as we hear any any other uh, news or updates about that on that front. Any Thank questions you. about that piece? Okay. So much, Shannon. So uh, now new business. First, uh, we're all. Uh, Excited to hear the Art of Recovery Progress Report. Great, and um, I've been giving you Art of Recovery uh, reports as part of my manager report, um, but uh, Allison Ostrovsky is our cultural affairs staff person that used to manage all of our citywide events, the production of all of our citywide events. Um, she has been leading this effort and is doing a tremendous job. And uh, along with our consultant, Sarah Delinen, who is here in attendance. Hi, Sarah. Um, and Allison and Sarah are the like dynamic duo behind Art of Recovery. And it's really, um, as you've heard in my reports over the past two years, um, is really has been an important project for us uh, during the pandemic. And um, so Allison has put together this report to share with you. So Allison, Thank you, Jim. Thank you. You said so much that I was going to say that it was a perfect oh. introduction. I just wanted to put my um, video on. Can you see me? I, I know most of you, but I haven't met all of you. So I just wanted you to be able to put a name to a face. Um, and uh, Sarah is also here, as Shannon mentioned. I'm not sure if, Sarah, if you're able, do you want to just turn on your video so people can get, say hi to you and see you? I'm not sure if she's able to or not. Oh, she's on as an attendee. I don't think she can. All right. Got Hi, it. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Allison. Hi, Lori. It's great to see you. That color looks fabulous on you, by the way. <laughs> um, so what uh, we're going to start with a, an overview video. And um, basically, it's today's going to be an overview of Art of Recovery starting from when it started, which was in November 2020 to the current day, to June 2022. And this is based on a uh, closeout report. So any project that's been completed, we ask them to fill out a, pro uh, a closeout report and ask them a, a ton of questions to really get a sense of the impact of, that the, the initiative has had. And so based on that, and then also we have monthly learning sessions where we invite all the, any of the partners or people, project leads to share of learnings and findings. And so based on these two things, the learning community sessions and the closeout reports, this is what we're sharing with you, the highlights of both of these. Um, so it'll be about like five or seven minutes and then we'll have time for questions after. And we're first gonna start with a um, uh, the overview uh, video. Um, Miles, if you don't mind sharing that first. Art of Recovery was developed to have the arts play an important role in the recovery efforts for the city. And it's really been an effective way to really show the power of the arts and how the arts 
can really make a positive impact in our lives. The goal of the program is to strengthen relationships between artists and other groups and to form stronger networks. And so we've done that successfully with business districts, neighborhood associations, and other community groups within Santa Monica. We believe that artists can have more creative solutions than any city official might have. So we really wanted to put these artists to work to envision new possibilities for our public spaces in Santa Monica. To date, we've employed over 100 Southern California-based artists to do a variety of projects, performing art, visual art, video, media art, for Art of Recovery. You can come to Santa Monica, no matter what part of the city that you're in, you will have the opportunity to have your day brightened by an unexpected art experience as you traverse the city. To learn more about Art of Recovery and see the projects that have been funded, go to santamonica.gov slash arts. Um, we love that. It's a great, uh, just it, being in the trenches a lot of the time, we don't always get to see the full sort of visual of everything that's happening and so it's always really great to see that um and we will dive uh right in um and learn more about um the impacts and a few other projects um miles can we start the slideshow please Sorry, just one second, it's having some issues. Not surprising. <laughs> we were struggling with this earlier. <laughs> Remember when we were in Ked Edwards and we would have um, issues with the projector? And the so you know, I guess wherever you go, the there you days. are. The good old days. What I wouldn't give for those issues. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, I can I can start. I'll start. Um, so first of all, before we can look at the impact, we can start with just what were the key goals of Art of Recovery. So one was to address four four focus areas that came out of COVID. So that is economic recovery, racial justice and cultural equity, well-being and public health, and community connectedness. Second key goal was to give artists the space and support to manifest their creative solutions to these four focus areas. And the third was to further build a cross-sector supportive, supportive ecosystem for artists and the projects in order to offer learning, learning, networking, and opportunity, opportunities for artists to work across sectors. So those are the three sort of overarching uh, goals. Okay, thank you, Miles. You can go to this um, second one. 
Uh, that's what we and throughout the throughout the slideshow there are um, photos of um, different pictures and you'll see underneath it the the lead project uh, um, who whose project it was and the name of the project okay so uh, currently to date we have spent five hundred and fifteen thousand dollars on twenty five projects that means twenty five projects that have been implemented and completed. And of those, we have uh, paid 182 creatives, and that includes 132 artists, as well as 50 arts producers and other creatives. And in order to bring all of these projects to light, 53 partners have helped uh, with all of these projects. Going back to that network and create a, creating the um, supportive uh, uh, network and ecosystem, okay? Next, please. Oh, thank you, thank you. No, sorry, can you go back, sorry. <laughs> um, and we also have 192,000 earmarked for eight projects that are currently in process, okay? Um, this gives you a sense of the, the range of projects. So out of the 33 projects, that's the 25 that have been completed and the eight that are in process, 11 of them are um, installations uh, or exhibits, 10 are in-person events, five are street activations, such as you know the, the murals on the K-Rail, uh, um, four are media, that includes um, uh, the documentation as well as uh, videos or movies, and um, three are online activations, and that includes you know workshops and performances, okay? Oh, sorry, one, one last thing about this is that Projects, most projects fall into more than one project type, but for purposes of this, we, we just went with the dominant type, so we could show you sort of the range. Okay, uh, oh, so now we're gonna go into key impacts. As part of the closeout report that I had mentioned, we asked, um, we asked the grantees about three particular areas, capacity building, financial and business, and social and emotional. So in terms of capacity building, 94% said that they gained an understanding of the process of working with the city, which is fantastic because it can be incredibly complicated working with the city. 78% made connections to people in non-art sectors in Santa Monica. 78% gained a deeper, gained a new or deeper understanding of the process of producing art in public. Okay. Uh, in terms of financial and business, 94% said the project attracted press or social media attention to them or their organization. 89% said the project connected them to partners they hadn't worked with before. And I didn't mention this in the last one, I meant to point out the projects, but this was Montana Avenue's project where they had uh, um, one tree on each of the 10 blocks uh, designed and decorated in this uh, really just became something that people really loved and enjoyed during the day and at nighttime they were each one was completely different and thematic from you know chandeliers to butterflies uh, etc okay uh, in terms of social and emotional uh, impact 89 percent said the artwork created a strong visual or sensory experience for, for participants 83% the artwork provided an outlet or space for participants' emotions, and 83% participants connected with other participants. And these two images are from Suchi Bronfman's piece, Undan Undanced Dances Through Prison Walls. These were um, dances that were created by um, incarcerated men that were then danced by professional dancers in different places in Santa Monica and film. So the one at the top is on the pier, the Santa Monica Pier. The one at the bottom is actually on top of the public safety facility building. And then these dances and some of the um, choreographers were, uh, was presented online and it, we, there was a really great turnout and a really deep conversation about incarceration and expression. And it was really, uh, really moving and, um, a, a beautiful project, okay? So now we're just gonna look at a cross section. So going back to those four focus areas, 
um, we're just going to highlight one project uh, per focus area to just kind of give you a sense of um, a sense of the impact. So the first focus area, economic recovery. This was Winterlit. This was one of the first projects that we did um, with downtown Santa Monica, and they hired nine different artists. And this was like at the height of COVID, people were not going outside, not wanting to shop. Um, downtown Santa Monica hired nine artists and gave each one a window and said, create something that reminds you of, you know, the holidays and what it means to you. And so each one was completely different and it created this sort of outdoor exhibit and place for people to go and see something really beautiful in a safe way. Um, and uh, nine, nine uh, artists were paid in addition to just having this lovely um, exhibit. Okay, and on each of these slides, you'll see uh, where it was, the time frame, and also the award amount. So for the next focus area, racial justice and cultural equity, we're highlighting the Orchestra Santa Monica project, A We Gather. This was a film that they created, um, a brand new film, and it included a, uh, an original piece of music that they composed. They did a lot of outreach with the black community and listened to and gathered stories, photos, documentation of past up Santa Monica and what it was like pre-red line people's memories um, and put together this 20 minute video that is um, uh, quite powerful and so it was it's been screened twice in person and now it's available online for free uh, to everyone and they're also looking at doing additional um, screenings um, okay uh, the next focus area is well-being and public health uh, this was um, an exhibit at uh, Building Bridges in Bergamot Station, and this was a project by an artist named, named Marcus Lutyens, and his image, his idea was for a felt, a felt red rose to be create, created for each person who was lost due to COVID, and he has taken this uh, internationally now, but um, basically the the um, the gallery became like a morning place for the community where people came and made a rose, shared stories, mourned, um, shared their grief. Kits, kits were created that people could pick up safely and take at home. And there were workshops where you could learn how to make this, uh, make this rose and then um, drop it off to be uh, contributed, um, to be added to this um, communal um, Memorial. It was also just recently showcased in the uh, the New York Times. Um, okay. Uh, the next area is community connectedness, and uh, Sea Change Lab was a project by artist uh, Marcus Quilin Nazario, and he had this this he still has this great uh, trailer that he just made into a. Um, a mobile stage and creative space and offered it to different artists for them to explore and experiment with. And this was at a height when people were experiencing a lot of isolation and loneliness. So a lot of the artists really worked with that idea and there were presentations done in the um, parking lot um, of these artists' work. And um, uh, we are looking at having a new iteration of Sea Change Lab that would be at Bergamont Station, and it's currently a pending project uh, that, that will be um, to be awarded. Um, next, please. Um, and this was our last, our the most recent uh, project. It was completed over the weekend, and it used quesadillas, art, and yoga as tools for participants to explore their creativity and learn about themselves and uh, uh, community. Uh, and we have, this This is again, this is just like a quick highlight. There are many more projects that fall into all of these focus areas. And at this, at this URL, there is a projects link that takes you to um, a page that lists all of the projects and has more information about the artist and also includes photos and videos that was just recently updated and will uh, continue to be updated. Thank you for um, thank you for your attention. And um, does anyone have any questions?
questions or comments? Shannon or Sarah, do you want to add anything? Yes. Um, Mary Elizabeth, go ahead. So I have a comment and question as part of a larger conversation. I'm just going to say it now as a uh, placeholder, and we can come back to it later or at another meeting. These things are phenomenal. I'm learning about 80% of them right now, well, after the fact. I have not had access to my Santa Monica um, email for about two and a half years, so there's a possibility things came there, although I don't necessarily think so. Christina is pretty good about getting them to my Gmail account in the interim. I've brought this up before because I would like to be much more engaged than I am because I don't find out about these things until after the fact. So I would love there to be some communication method where staff can let us know about all the really great things that happen before they happen. Um, because they're really good, I don't need to like be involved in the planning of them, any of them, I just want to know about them so that we can go sort of support all the work the staff is doing, to be there in person, that kind of thing. We don't need to like follow up on this now, I just want to, I've mentioned this before, but I feel really strongly about it right now. Um, the red um, rose thing, I was currently at the time, I was on this, the Brooklyn Culture Arts one as well, I found out about it and was going to bring it, and they said, oh, no, we just finished that. So I literally found out about the Santa Monica one a week after it when we were talking to the artist about doing it in Burbank before he went to D.C. So oh, really dumb that we had just had it here. I had no idea, and I would have loved to engage. I mean, we made roses. I engaged a lot of friends and family for the Burbank one, but not for the Santa Monica one. So I just would love to find a way that we can communicate these things prior to it to people on the commission. Thank you. And I'll, I'll just note, not not for the Arts Commission side, but that is something that we are talking about also internally with the with all of the, the, the projects, because internally they're all saying the same thing. Well, I didn't know about that, or how do we find out? So we've started a calendar of, of what's happening, but we're, we are looking at what is the best way to let people know, and that's always been sort of issue is there like a, a one-stop shop that where you can find everything so it, it's an excellent point I'm really glad that you brought it up and just know it's something that we have talked about we are looking at what's the best way to uh, address that in, in, ter in terms of art of recovery thank you um, and for thank the you Allison and, and Sarah and everybody involved in this um, any other questions or comments Well, I'll say I mean, it was great work, and this kind of reinforced what you both just said because we've had, we've been having this conversation for what years about getting outreach to the us and the public. So thanks for acknowledging it. I mean to to just you know point out one of the the strange phenomena of um, the diversification of media, social media, is that we all um, subscribe to so many different platforms that we are all in bubbles and um the 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 dissemination of information in one sense is easier than it has ever been in human history except that it isn't um the the, the reality is is that um it, it is incredibly hard to um to grab mindshare right now um in 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 the the age of the influencer the uh traditional channels for disseminating information have gone fallow and i think everyone is is reimagining and um reconsidering how to how to do it better and and from what i can see nobody has nobody has the answer yet so i uh i feel for all of the the you know i i certainly you know, agree with what Mary Elizabeth is saying. I also know how hard it is to get the word out on anything, unless you are, you know, living on the net and and scouring every announcement. And uh, it's it, it's just become daunting. So it, that's that's definitely a, a discussion. And and I I think uh, what Mary Elizabeth has raised is something that we all perhaps can. Um, think about in a in a retreat that you know I think we will need um, coming forward when we have a 
um, when we fill in the missing uh, commissioners and uh, we, we get all the reappointments going, I think we we should really con consider how we all work together better to um, to spread words. There, there, there's no easy way. I just want to agree with what you just said, Michael, and also that there's a difference between the general getting it out there and the specific communications to the arts commissioners. So I know that with Art of Recovery, we, some of us were involved within it at the beginning, and there were reports at every arts commission on Art of Recovery, but it was they were quick and they weren't really you know, we could easily have mentioned it in passing, but you wouldn't have gotten an idea of what it really was. So it's really something to think about the Arts Commission as a partner in this that you communicate with as a partner, that, or that we, you know, whoever's involved in these big projects, someone communicates with the Arts Commission as a partner in it, as opposed to, um, yeah, just these quick you know, I, i'm not sure how to do it i know sarah for example had ev you know everything on instagram but if you weren't connected on instagram with art of recovery you wouldn't have if you weren't following it you wouldn't get it so how do maybe we to, to just think about how do we use these social media tools in a way that really connects us make sure that every arts commissioner knows to follow these things or you know i'm not you know i'm not sure but I, i'm glad you're talking about it and i think we can do better i really do i totally agree and i do i do also want to state congratulations to everybody it was all it was all really phenomenal i didn't need to sort of jump in on that but um i do still i agree well i thank you for pointing out sort of the commission as a partner um and i'm happy to sort of offline do like a one of the you know the mini um committees not a long-standing one but just a couple chatting sessions with people um, either as a commissioner or as a community member, depending on what happens in the next few days. So, putting that out there. Yeah, this is a great discussion. Uh, thank you. Thank you for beginning. Uh, can I add one quick thing? Um, just to note that years ago we did a an event, um, uh, an event, a survey about events, and just looking at what events are people going to and why. This was obviously pre, you know. When we, before we stopped doing events, but one of the questions was we asked people, did you go to these different events? And we asked, we asked every event that we were doing. And the main reason why people didn't go to them was because they didn't know about them. <laughs> so it's not, I'm just, I'm just going back to this has been an ongoing issue. And even, anyway, I just wanted to share that. I found that very enlightening. Um, and it wasn't that people were saying, you're not doing something that's not really resonating with me or I'm not interested. It's that I didn't know about it, so. And, and this is systemic. This is this is part of the siloing of, um, of social media, is that unless you live on social media, you are gonna miss a lot. If, if social media is the way that information's being aggregated and disseminated, um, if um, if you rely on your mailbox, you're going to miss a lot. If you rely on mainstream media, you're going to miss a lot, unless you are combing everything. So the daunting challenge is how do you create a cross-platformed information dissemination system? And whoever comes up with the answer is going to be a billionaire um, because it's it's not going to just happen um and and a lot of it is unfortunately self-realized and self-actualized which means we have to be a little bit more aggress aggressive myself included all of us the information's out there um but uh how much time can you spend uh mining um but a great discussion much to, much more to continue but uh let's move on and um go on to the next the next one is raising your hand. The city yards. Michael. Report. Michael, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, um, Deepa needs to leave, um, and because we have two grant items that need approval, would it be okay to bring the those two grant approvals up in the agenda and push city yards back? Okay, thank you. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon.
Thank you, Michael. Um, commissioners, I guess that means we're moving to the artist fellowship item. I, is that correct? Yeah, Michael was is muted though. Michael Masucci, you're muted. It sounds like you're trying to talk. Yeah, I was just saying, uh, Nathan, uh, you know, okay. um, if uh, we've just switched, so please take it away. Thank you. Um, great. So annually, commissioners, you are asked to approve the recommendations from grant panels for the Santa Monica Artist Fellowships and also our CAP grant program. So I'm going to uh, quickly uh, run down the staff reports on both those uh, for your um, for your review and approval. The uh, Artist Fellowship Program for 2022-23, so that's the one that starts so that's the grant period that begins next month and continues for 12 months, um, is the 13th year of the Artist Fellowship Program, which was implemented in accordance with the Creative Capital Cultural Plan um, for the purpose of recognizing the creativity of Santa Monica community by investing in artists. It's a very robust program. Before the pandemic, there were $20,000, two $20,000 uh, awards every year. Um, Due to the cuts, they are down to 16,000, uh, still very robust for a city-based fellowship program, one of the biggest in the country. The fellows that have accumulated over the 13 years in a sort of cohort uh, represent diverse visions and voices of Santa Monica's extensive professional creative community. Past fellows have reported that the program provided them with opportunities to concentrate on the development of new work buy materials, hire assistants, focus public attention, public attention on their art, and invest in their careers. In addition to the two large awards, there are three grants of $4,200, which we call project fellowships, that are awarded every year as well. And they, uh, they are awarded by means of an application process, so any artist can apply for $4,200. Uh, the larger awards are by a nomination process, so the, nom the artists have to be nominated by one of our nominators change every year to be eligible. A panel is drawn from the list of arts professionals that uh, you guys approve every year. Um, and uh, they review both the nominations and the applications and select awardees to be recommended to you for approval. Um, the disciplines for the nominated fellowships rotate annually. Uh, the discipline this uh, round, uh, this cycle is the visual arts. Um, by contrast, the project fellowships are open to any and all disciplines uh, every year. Um, this cycle marks the second year of a new component to the program, which is the Kate Johnson Digital Arts Fellowship, an exciting new um, aspect of the program whereby one of every year's uh, project fellowships uh, are set aside for digital, digital artists. Uh, um, so uh, we'll get to, we'll get to the uh, the recommendation for that in a moment. Uh, let's see this year's nominators. Um, and let me also point out that we the the well, a feature of our nomination um, process is that uh, nom nominees may um, are, are nominees who do not win uh, an award uh, on the year that they're nominated will remain in the nomination pool for a whole nother cycle. So you, when you get nominated for this award, you stay in the nomination pool for two whole cycles, which I think is a, uh, a good feature. Um, and um, the nominators for this year were Mark Stephen Greenfield, who's the chair of the, uh, uh, who's a, who's a uh, well-known painter and former um, uh, staff member of the Los Angeles um, City Cultural Affairs Department, and also the chair of the Art Center, Im uh, Art Center Imaging Department, Dennis Keeley, uh, and, and the nominators from the previous round, whose nominees were also in this pool, were Chris Kiramitsu, who's a, a curator, Suzanne Lacey, an um, internationally known um, a social practice artist who's a longtime Santa Monica resident, and um, Leslie Elwood, a, um arts uh, public art um, uh, consultant who we've worked with for, for many years. So um, the nominated artists were Diana Wong, Joan Roby, uh, who, who uh, was formerly an arts commissioner, Rachel Lakowitz, who was also formerly an arts commissioner, Meg Cranston, Nicola Good, Jody Zellin, Robin Mitchell, former arts commissioner, Melinda Smith, Alt Schuler, Tony Berlant, Bob Berkman, uh, 